Your doctor has recommended that you receive a permanent pacemaker implanted in your body. But what does that actually mean? The heart is located in the center of the chest, enclosed by the breastbone and rib cage. By contracting in a rhythmic way, it causes the blood in your body to circulate. A normally functioning heart beats at a rate of between 60 and 100 contractions per minute. These contractions are triggered by a small piece of heart tissue called the SA node. The SA node generates a small electrical signal that is transmitted by nerves to the surrounding muscle. These electrical impulses are what cause the heart muscle to contract. In some people, the SA node fails to cause the heart to contract with its normal rhythm, causing an abnormal heartbeat or arrhythmia. The most common form of arrhythmia for which pacemaker surgery is often recommended is bradyarrhythmia or slow heart rate. There are a number of reasons why you may have developed an arrhythmia, but in most cases, the problem is caused by a disruption in the SA node or in the system of nerves that conduct electrical signals to the heart muscle. A pacemaker is a device that is designed to provide an electrical signal to the heart muscle and to help it maintain a proper rhythm. There are several types of pacemakers and the particular model selected for you will be based on your specific condition. But all pacemakers share a common design. Your pacemaker will consist of two major pieces, a small metal box that contains a battery and other electronic components, and an insulated wire called a lead, which will carry the electrical impulses from the pacemaker to the heart. Your pacemaker will be permanently implanted in your chest, and depending on your condition, either one or two leads will be attached to the heart muscle. Then, the surgeon will make a small skin incision in the upper chest, just below the collarbone. A pocket is then created between the skin and the tissue that covers the chest muscle. Next, the team will use instruments called retractors to hold back the skin and underlying tissue. They'll locate a large blood vessel called the subclavian vein. Using a special needle and syringe, your doctor will puncture the wall of the vein. A thin guide wire is then inserted through the needle and into the vein. Your doctor gently pushes the wire until it reaches the heart. Using an instrument called a fluoroscope, the surgical team is able to see the wire's progress through the vein and into the beating heart. Once the wire is in place, the needle is removed and a catheter, or hollow tube, is passed over the guide wire and into the heart. One or two leads are then passed through the catheter. When the lead or leads are in their proper position, the catheter is removed. Finally, the lead is connected to the pacemaker. The pacemaker is inserted into the pocket below the collarbone, and the incision is closed. Germs 
are present always on your hands, and they can be transferred to other parts of your own body, to the family member for whom you're caring, your patient, and to any clean object you touch. By washing your hands correctly, you remove germs from your hands. Hand washing is the single most important way you can prevent infection from occurring and prevent the spread of infection. You must carefully wash and dry your hands before and after each time you care for your family member, your patient. Before and after you handle your patients and your own food and drink. Before and after you manipulate any contact lenses. Before you apply and after you remove gloves. After you use the toilet. After you cough, sneeze or blow your nose. After contact with anything that could be soiled or have germs on it. After you pick up any object from the floor. Hand washing takes a minimum of 10 to 15 seconds, longer if your hands are soiled. The longer you wash, the more germs are removed. The friction generated by rubbing your hands together removes the germs from your skin and running water can then wash them away. Every time you wash your hands, take your time and don't rush. Do the hand washing carefully and thoroughly. Use liquid soap from a dispenser. Bar soap holds germs on its surface. Make sure you have paper towels and a waste receptacle nearby. Remove all jewelry from your hand except a wedding band and push your watch and sleeves up away from your hands. Turn on warm water. Point your fingers down to prevent water running onto your arms and wet your hands. Apply soap from the dispenser. Point your fingers down and rub your hands vigorously together in a circular motion. Start counting seconds at this point. Intertwine your fingers to clean all surfaces of the fingers. Rub your fingernails against the palm of the other hand to get soap under the tips of the nails. If your nails are soiled, clean under them with an orange stick or brush. Keep your hands down and continue to rub them together in a circular motion until the end of your count for 15 seconds. Keep your hands down and rinse them from the wrist to fingertips. Pick up a clean paper towel and turn off the water, still keeping your hands pointed down. Discard the paper towel into the waste receptacle. Pick up another clean paper towel and carefully and completely dry your hands. Discard the paper towel into a waste receptacle. The key points to remember are that friction is critical for removing germs and the friction should be applied for at least 15 seconds. Always keep your fingers pointed down and turn off the water with a paper towel. The equipment you will need to assemble includes two pair of clean disposable gloves, cleansing solution, small gauze pads for cleaning, large gauze pads for dressing the wound, adhesive tape, a large sealable plastic bag. Carefully wash and dry your hands. Put on your gloves. The first step is to remove the old dressing. Loosen the edges of the tape and peel the tapes off the skin by pulling them towards the wound. 
keeping the skin taut with the other hand. Lift the tapes and the dressing off together. Note any odor or color of any drainage on the dressing. Discard the dressing and tapes into the plastic bag. If the dressing sticks to the wound, pour a little cleansing solution onto the dressing and let it sit for a minute. Gently pull the dressing off, keeping the skin taut above the wound. Look carefully at the wound. Any of the following should be reported immediately to your doctor or nurse. Redness of the wound or surrounding skin, drainage from the wound, particularly if it's yellow and smells, any bleeding, swelling of the skin around the wound, separation of the edges of the sutured wound, or maceration, a waterlogged appearance of the edges of the wound. Pour some cleansing solution onto a small gauze pad. Squeeze out the surplus solution and with one stroke clean the wound from top to bottom. Discard the gauze pad into the plastic bag. Using a fresh gauze pad with cleansing solution for each stroke, work away from the wound to clean the skin for about three inches from the wound on either side. Stroke from top to bottom and discard each gauze pad into the plastic bag. Remove your gloves and discard them into the plastic bag. Wash and dry your hands. Open the package with the large gauze dressing. Put on clean gloves. Pick up the gauze dressing, holding it only at two diagonally opposite corners. Center the gauze pad over the wound and place it on the wound. Tape the dressing securely in place. Remove your gloves and discard them into the plastic bag. Seal the bag securely and discard it into the trash. Wash and dry your hands. If your skin is sensitive to the adhesive on the tape, hypoallergenic tape can be bought at your surgical supply store or bandages or binders can be used to hold the dressing in place. Consult with your doctor or nurse.